Unless, I mean, he's, he's, he's blown his defence when he gets to court. You know, yeah, yeah, he's exactly. sung his murder in the... <laughs> exactly. I didn't yeah. mean he's it. Yeah, but himself. they died of strychnine. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's quite funny, isn't it? Ah, oh, damn, I knew I should have written that song. Yeah. Out loud. <laughs> it's showtime, folks. Everybody and a rinky dinky do to you too. Um, Andy, how you doing? I'm rinky dinky great, man. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing swell. I'm doing swell. I rinky dinky knew it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really rinky dinky hard to hide it. You know what I mean? You're happy, you're happy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. So, got a track from you by a band. I don't know if you heard them. They're called Super Drag. Who sucked out the feeling? If it's not that, we're good because that's the only song I know by Super Drag. I remember it sounding a bit different to that, but yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Something to that effect. That's the only song I know yeah. by them. And it's, oh, really? it's, it's a bit of a maybe this is a misnomer, or maybe I'm not qualified to designate this, but I always assume that they were a bit of a one hit wonder. Um, but that's, yeah, that's what the scene is. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, then, yeah, that's the that's the only song I know. And as you can tell by my rendition of it, I'm not even that familiar with it. It's been a while since I've heard that song. Um, but I, if this is not it, what's the name of the title? Because I'm sure I've never heard it before. It's a Chaplin number. It's called Amphetamine. Oh, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> um, well, I'll give Amphetamine. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Okay. I think some people say Amphetamine. Um, yeah but here in blighty would say amphetamine okay we'd say amphetamine so that's why yeah. i was th okay cool all right uh let me go give it a listen and uh i'll come back and let you know what i think of amphetamine or amphetamine or amphetamine yes do that so <laughs> it's cool and swiftly if you don't mind of course of course <laughs> it's the only way you can do it when you're on amphetamine so exactly <laughs> you're the next local superstar Take a bow if you get this far Nothing's real, baby, make a move Some expected groove Prove it to the world Now drink can be real This is the last time Hard to conceal very complimentary of the vocals <clears throat> but man i really really love this piano and just then sort of um it sounded like some strings were happening as well and it's just so i don't know it's a little somber but it's it's lovely um obviously the lyrics are interesting in and of themselves um which we'll dig into i'm sure with john in a bit and i'll try to like keep focused on them but this music is just so lovely i'm gonna take it back a little bit
Oh my gosh, that's so nice. That's so nice. That's coming back a little bit. I really, I mean, this is, it's almost charming um, in its musicality. goodness the it's subtle and it's it's not layer it's not produced in such a way that like it is the the feature player or anything but my god the strings at such um a level of brightness to this to this song um and it's just really endearing to me um yeah i'm interested to see what john has to say about this tune um and this uh, this concept of uh her love being an infant of mine. So, um, yeah, let's chat it up with him. Good song. All right, I am back. I have survived. What say you? This this was weird. Um, in in the best way. Um, but like, talk about like uh, when you go in with no expectations, um, you find yourself more easily caught off guard. If it if it's you know, all I had was that one song. Uh, yeah. So that we, and this didn't sound like that to me. It wasn't almost, that, was it? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. In fact, this was almost like a ballad. Um, the way the piano comes in, um, and it's just, it was very, it was, it was, just, it was very pure sounding, lovely sounding. Again, I'll use the word ballad. Uh, really enjoyed it. And then um, I, I, I caught a lyric of, um, was it? how or had to conceal the flavor of strychnine was the <laughs> lyric that I caught. And I'm like, well, I'm going to have the to... John's going to have some explaining to do as far as the lyrics go, because the title in and of itself, which then become, you know, you hear it later in the song um, begs the question, what the hell is this song about? Um, I, I will say as the song progressed, maybe around the 150 mark, close to the two minute mark, the guitars um, made their presence known a bit more uh in the song and then wouldn't you know it so did the drums they kind of picked up a little bit as well and i really uh enjoyed that kind of next step in the song yeah not that there was anything wrong with the beginning and, and like i said the beautiful ballady nature of it all but it needed to do something and it did and i really enjoyed it um her love is an amphetamine or amphetamine or amphetamine was the lyric that i caught next and that's an interesting line in and of itself, right? It's pretty loaded. Um, then, oh. oh my God, the rhythm of the guitars around the three uh, minute mark. Those guitars and drums in that part were just such cool. It was such a cool little riff, yeah. a little progression that they were doing there. And I really, really, really liked that. Um, and then this, the last bit of the, mu of the music that really stood out to me was this lovely bit of, and it wasn't ham handed or anything like that, but this lovely bit of string work um, that appeared in the, in the song. And it almost adds like a layer of brightness to an otherwise sort of sombery sounding song. Yeah. Like it gives it a level of brightness. And I think you've used this, this analogy before where like it takes the edges off 
um, where one instrument can sort of take the edges off the sound of the rest of the music. And that to me is kind of what the strings did for this yeah. song. Um, and really, really liked it. It was a, it was a really good song and it proved to me that these guys had a lot more to offer than just, I think the song sucked out is the one that I know. So, um, good choice. Please tell me what the hell the song is about and tell me a little bit more about this band that I clearly don't know enough about. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, we'll do the song first and then I'll go into the band. Um, I don't really know too much about the meanings. And they, as you'd imagine from being a one hit wonder, there's not a lot of stuff on there. I have got the lyrics though. So we'll par through them and we'll probably work it out together. So it starts off, you're the next local superstar. Take a bow if you get this far. Nothing's real, baby. Make a move. Some expected groove. Um, it's interesting to use the word the next local superstar. That's quite damning, isn't mm. it? Um, but yeah, and that's the pre-chorus. Prove it to the world. Now drink and be real. This is the last time. Hard to conceal the flavor of strychnine. Whenever you steal, you make it the right line. So I'm wondering if he's talking about um, another band or another talent. And, you know, they're not quite what they think they are in terms of the next big thing. And they're mm -hmm. probably plagiarists as well. Um, and, you know, this poison chalice, with you know, of fame is also something that's going to kill you, you know. OK, so it's like a bit of a metaphor there. I mean, it had to be right. I mean, who's literal about that? But Unless, okay, I mean, he's, he's, yeah. he's blown his defence when he gets to court. You know, yeah, yeah, he's exactly. sung his murder in the... <laughs> exactly. I didn't yeah. mean he's it. Like yeah, but song. they died of strychnine. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's quite funny, isn't it? Oh, damn, I knew I should have written that song. Damn out loud. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so second verse. You're the next disappointing boom burning out in the same black room. Nothing's real if you read the news, if you bleed the blues. And then into the pre-chorus. Again, the next disappointing boom is is really sort of... Uh, oh, yeah. Disheartening. Yeah, that caught my <laughs> attention instantly. Yeah. And again, prove it to the world, now drink and be real. This is the last time. Again, that's got a nice, you know, you know, be real when you're, when you're tired. <laughs> hard to, this is the last time hard to conceal the flavour of strychnine. Whenever you steal, you make it the right line. And then there's that lovely break. Mm -hmm. And it goes on. And then it's the chorus is that bit re repeated at the end. Rolling with some friends of mine. Her love is an amphetamine. And then they just keep repeating that. Rolling with a, some friends of mine. Oh, yeah. So they have that bit in. Uh, her love is an amphetamine. Right, was a friend of mine, and then break. Um, and then it's back to that again. Um, her love is an amphetamine finishes, and that's it. Do you think that having heard this and you spelling out all the lyrics and no real other allusion to a female character in the song, do you think the her is fame or stardom or? the pursuit thereof because like Glory. that's gotta yeah. be like yeah when when fame's loving you back or you're getting some shine that's gotta be like a rush right and i think amphetamine's a really good um analogy because it's this rush but it's very harmful for you as well oh yeah you know? yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, exactly yeah. it isn't it so yeah i guess i i never really delved into the lyrics i've listened to this hundreds of times but i never i just sing along um, and, well, guess the words and sing along, but so uh, yeah, I mean, I picked this because um, I think it's, it's beautiful and it's um, it's kind of a again, we've had this quite recently a lot, and with one of those <laughs> stuff that you've heard, it, it's kind of almost like a throwbacky song, you know. Mm -hmm. It could have easily, you know, you take away the, the sort of the quality of the production and some of it. If someone had knocked this out in 1984 or whatever, you wouldn't have been surprised because of the the way the, the song's written, you know, yep. it's that old fashioned sort of structure and craftsmanship to it. Um, but I'll, I'll get into the band. So they formed. I mean, there's not a lot on the 
<laughs> so John, said, can, I, can I ask you a real quick question? Because you sort of talked about this being a throwback. When did this come out? Okay. So this came out in 1998. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And you're right. At, even in 98, this had this at, at that point would have had almost a nostalgic type sound to it uh, yeah. or a sound that we've heard before. Well, okay, cool, cool. That, that's cleared up. Go on with, with the band again then. Okay. So um, members of the band, John Davis, vocals, guitar. Don Coffrey Jr. drums, Brandon Fisher guitar, and Tom Pappas bass. I don't know why bass is last. There's no inference on, you know, never, preference. Never in my heart. <laughs> so, uh, as I say, it's not a lot on them, but um, formed early 90s is all it says. Their first um, issue was an EP in 95 called Senorita, which I did get at the time. I really liked that song a lot but their only mainstream hit was um sucked out in 96 okay. from the album regretfully yours now they, they did sort of get a lot of airplay and attention it didn't storm right up the charts but it got enough for them to electra records gave them backing and said great go away and do something more radio friendly and gave them a shed load of money so, of course, they did exactly the opposite. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, so this album, the, the, the album this is from, is called Head, Kit, uh, Head Trip in Every Key from 1998. And they purposely went again instructions. They changed their sound, particularly adding in orchestration, sitars. I mean, the whole shebang, because they had the money. And they did admit later on that... Um, they saw this as their only chance to do a really good album with loads of money, so they were just going to do what the hell they wanted, and they did. Um, Electra weren't uh, weren't very pleased. They didn't give the they didn't give it any publicity whatsoever. So guess what? The album flopped, and they were dropped. Oh. Uh, I would have to say it is a great unheard album. A majority of people never listened to it. Um, they do like about eight different styles of music on there. And it's really accomplished. I mean, you can argue whether the songs are fantastic or just decent or whatever. There's two or three I absolutely adore. And it has a, uh, you know, it has a feel to it that's really nice. And it feels like something they loved and worked on. You know, it really feels that way. So it's a great, great album. Um, they did four more albums. They split then in 2003. Ref Sorry, they did four more albums in total. So they carried on to 2003 and split. They reformed again in 2007 to 2010. And then they reformed again, again in 2021 and are still going to the present. And apparently they are working on new music. Oh, wow. Then now, does that mean that they've got themselves a new deal? Um, or are they just doing this independently? I don't know. That's all right. I've got. There's a lot, a lot of information out there. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing nowadays you don't have to rely on record labels, do you? That's you the first just... thing I was thinking about when you were telling the story of the, their last great hope on that album. And I'm like, mm -hmm. it's a damn shame, man, because nowadays you can just sort of do it. do it on your own and say to hell with whomever and, uh, you know, kind of take the uh, take the wheel, if you will. Yeah, so many, and I mean, so many great bands of the '90s pro and before that probably died too early of deaths because of of that dynamic not existing or that avenue not not yet existing for them. It's a damn shame. And I mean, also the fact is you can get the kit now at home, and you can do almost as good a job. And some yeah. people have done even better, you know, from their own sort of DIY, you know. Yeah, which is a punky ethos that I always love. Yeah, and, you know, I guess there must be thousands of bands about their legs cut from under them by the record uh, labels who didn't believe in them or give them a chance. And it, well, I guess also then it was more expensive business to be in as well. Yeah, like they didn't the have the luxury of being able to take those yeah. chances and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but I think the, the, the lack of the power of the record label is probably a good thing in getting people out there, but then... The bands themselves probably don't earn as much money, the successful ones, as would have done previously. I know, like in the 70s, you know, in the UK, if you were one hit wonder, had a single number one, you were set for life. Whereas you would only pay the studio bill now, if that, for, you know, yep. get to that. So, um, yeah, you know, swings and roundabouts. It's a shame, but yeah, this album in particular, Head Trip and Ever Key, superb album worth checking out.
Okay. Yeah, I definitely, uh, <clears throat> definitely will. That's awesome, man. Well, thanks so much for sharing this song. This is, it's fun to get, um, your mind kind of remapped on, on the, the presupposition you have about a band or an artist, yeah. um, when there's really more to them than just the one hit, um, yeah. that, that got them, you know, into your sphere. Um, and, and I, it's, this is a great, this channel is a great avenue for me to kind of learn more about some of those acts and artists. So thanks so much for sharing it. I'm going to probably get it. I'm going to have to look into that. This, this, they're sort of the last hoorah album that you were just talking about. I'm going to have to look into that and see kind of the crazy experimentation that they did on that, knowing that it was kind of their, their Hail Mary attempt, um, yeah. at, at something they wanted to do. So that's, that's really cool. Um, everybody out there in the audience, let us know what you think of this band, uh, what you think of the song. Uh, if you like it, please hit the like button, share and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Um, and thank you so much for sticking around with us. We always appreciate y'all. Uh, John, thanks again, man. I'm going to go ahead and take us out and say everybody out there, be kind to one another and please come back and join us on the next episode of Into the Music. See ya. See you guys.